So the last tip has to do with YAML pipelines and variables and um, a gotcha. So many engineers want to, from the very beginning, sort of prevent reuse. And it's like, I'm going to put everything in a variable. Um, but when you don't know what you're doing yet, like you don't know what the pipeline is supposed to look like, how you want to separate your resources, etc., cetera, um, put it as close as possible to the code. So this is an example YAML pipeline. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Um, if I come down here, there's a variable section and you'll see that I maybe reuse it in the code, um, but I define them all sort of up here. Uh, one of the sort of pro tips that I like is actually putting the pipeline conditions in a variable at the very top. Um, so in the documentation, you'll find often under conditions, a lot of this uh, variables um, equals, you know, source branch, etc. a little bit sort of messy. Um, instead, I just prefer is dev is release. And I put all that up here. Um, there's a few places to define variables. So let's look at the same pipeline, but in the Azure DevOps uh, UI. And I said before that I put the variables here in the YAML. Um, if you come into the pipeline itself, you'll also see this variables tab. And you can see that initially I put them here and they were kind of hidden. Um, later I asked myself, why would I ever put anything here? And I think actually I can delete all of them. Um, because I eventually changed this. Um, and actually, I'll show in a second how you do secrets, etc., as well. Um, and so I can get rid of that. Ah, actually, now that I look at it, that's probably why that variables feature was there. I could mark something as a secret um, in Azure DevOps and not actually put it in here. Um, but actually, my preferred way to do it now is... Um, a, don't use secrets in your pipelines, right? You should be using service connections theoretically um, if you can. And then I will use libraries. And so libraries will just load a bunch of variables into the pipeline. Um, I use the lib dash uh, prefix so that when I'm debugging my YAML pipeline, I know where the variable is coming from. It's coming from uh, the library. If it doesn't have the lib prefix in front of it, then it's probably defined in the YAML itself directly. Um, and you'll also see that I have um, Key Vault integration here, and all of these uh, variables start with KV so that I know they are in Key Vault. Uh, one of the things that's important to understand when it comes to secrets versus um, normal variables is that a secret is encrypted. Um, and also when it's a secret, it is not automatically loaded into uh, your environment. So if I, uh, this has moved, now it's just Azure. Um, if I come into here, just to show you, this is the one that actually deploys. Um, you'll see that there seems to be a bit of like uh, repetitive code in here where I repeat all the time, what is subscription ID? What is the client ID, et cetera. Um, and that's because uh, secrets need to be explicitly mapped into the environment. Um, so that's why it's there. Um, yeah, so there's three places that you can put variables in the YAML pipeline, um, in the library, um, or in that weird UI thing um, if you need to mask your secret. Uh, one random tip here is that I have a group called Mass Subscription and Tenant IDs, um, and that's something that I often include in pipelines. I don't actually use it per se but I don't want to reveal what my subscription ID is, uh, both for my internal subscription as well as my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription um, and this, the Azure AD tenant IDs. I don't want to reveal them, so I just have this library that I include.